Again, I'm delighted to welcome Nola Sharp, Distinguished Toastmaster. As we heard last week, Nola's been in Toastmasters for 13 years and is currently a member of three clubs. She's won the District 3 Table Topics and Humorous Speech Finals and was awarded the D73, District 73 Division Director of the Year in 2016 and Area Director of the Year in 2020. And Noel is currently Vice President Public Relations of Wandin Toastmasters Club. So Noel is now going to discuss the advanced meeting roles. And I'm sure I have a feeling that she's going to make us all do a bit of work in her session, perhaps. <laughs> but anyway, please welcome Nola. Thank you so very much. And again, I'm delighted to be with you. And I just wonder, I'm trying to put myself back 14 years to be a new Toastmaster like so many of you are today. And I know we're overwhelming you and this is going to be another overwhelming perhaps session of information. But the information that I give is not going to be on slides because I am a techno diner nolasaur. Uh, but I hope that you have a pen and a paper and that you will record some of the suggestions and tips that I am giving you. Because they come from a gleaning over the past 14 years of being in Toastmasters, because I've been surrounded by amazing mentors that have been on the journey with me and like you, have chosen to take to experience fun, and a learning of ourselves and, and what we are capable of. The roles on which I will speak today may not be assigned to you as new Toastmasters for many, many months. For Vice Presidents of Education do not set up new members to fail, but will encourage you to step up when the role will take you further in your understanding of all that you have learned thus far. So the roles that Debbie covered so beautifully this morning will very likely be the roles that you will be assigned for some time before you take on the rest of the more involved roles. But in between time, I want you to promise, all put up your hands, all put up your hands, you're going to make a promise that you will observe, take notes of every aspect of the meeting roles at your club meetings. Just because, thank you, you may put your hands down. Don't you take direction so beautifully? Because it is no point in you only paying attention when you're involved or paying attention when you think it pertains to you. Because everything that happens at a club meeting pertains to you. It's a learning curve. I see people almost nodding off at some Toastmasters meetings and I cannot understand that. I'm on the edge of my seat and I'm ready for anything that people want to give me. And they give me so much. The roles that I'm covering today are Toastmaster, Table Topics Master, Speech Evaluator and General Evaluator. And they are all important and on every meeting agenda, action by usually experienced, but also emerging leaders of your club. Be ready to play your part now in preparing to be one of those inspiring leaders. The first role is the Toastmaster. Within this role, you will learn the art of impressive introductions that do not conclude with, take it away, it's all yours, or go for it. A suggestion, please make welcome to the lectern, Marlene Sinclair and lead with applause. Which of those four examples are you going to use? Is it going to be take it away? Raise your hands. It's all, oh, put your hands down, Debbie Rose. It is all yours or go for it. And are you ready? Or are you going to say, please make welcome to the lectern, Marlene Sinclair. Whoa! And then you lead the applause. Some Toastmasters, after they've been Toastmasters for a very long time, forget this very basic role of the Toastmaster, of leading the applause. I hope you've been in Toastmasters long enough to know how addictive the pause is and how empowering it can be. 
You will learn the art of creating impromptu segues between segments on the agenda. And you'll learn the necessity of preparedness in more than in any other role. When you are the Toastmaster, you must prepare for you to enhance and for you to enjoy this meeting role. It shouldn't be scary. And if you prepare, it will not. In turn, I promise that it will be you that will mentor the next new member because that's the path that you are on. I hope that that promise fills you with excitement and not trepidation. For no one will present quite like you because you are unique and you are the asset that builds strong clubs. How many people really believe that? Do you believe your membership at your Toastmasters Club is valued by your club? You may raise your hands because I'm looking at you. Thank you. Because if you do not, why indeed are you at Toastmasters? On the first session, I talked about what do you bring to your Toastmasters meeting? And if you only bring yourself, that is enough because you are amazing. So as not to overwhelm the new members with us today, I shall suggest three actions to reinforce the information that is on hand from your mentor, from the Toastmaster website, from tutorials, and aren't they wonderful at TI now? We never had those when I first became a Toastmaster and it took me a long time to learn stuff, uh, tutorials, and even on Easy Speak, whereby clicking onto the role that you are going to have up comes all of the information that you require. Firstly, prior to the meeting, when the meeting theme is chosen, in the clubs that I'm at, we contact each speaker and ask for a succinct answer based on the theme. Okay? So you ask a question like, if the theme was holidays, that you would ask as a Toastmaster, could you email me very succinct one sentence of the best holiday that you've ever had or the worst holiday that you've ever had? And then two, the introductions can then include the sharing of comments made by each of the members. And three, confirm the pathway project, the number and the title. The offshoot of this is when you get to know your fellow members, their lives before joining, their interests, their aspirations and their fears. And they will feel valued because you've taken the time to contact them prior to their speaking. And determine beforehand if the lectern and or props are to be used because as Toastmaster you need to know this. And, and this is done prior to the formal introduction to the speaker. We ask the, the evaluator to read the purpose of the speech and confirm the timing. Now, do you have your pens ready? Introductions always, always, always follows the format of speaker's name, speech title, speech title, speaker's name. I would like someone to introduce me to my speech entitled Seahorses. Put up your hand and someone will spot you. No, I'd like a new member, Debbie Rose, sorry. A new member that has never been a Toastmaster and introduced a speaker. Would you like to raise your hands, please? Thank you, Catherine Dickey from Lilydale. Would you like to introduce me with my speaker's name, my title, which is Seahorses, and then my name, and then welcome me to the lectern. Will you please make welcome your Toastmaster for one minute, Catherine Dickey. <laughs> Thank you, Nola. I would like to um, introduce the lovely Nola Sharp from Lilydale Toastmasters, and her speech title is Seahorses. Let's have a warm welcome for oh, Nola no. Sharp. No, Sorry. no, 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 no. What have you got written down on your piece of paper? I've got speaker's name, speech yes. title, speech title, speaker's yes. name. You only gave the speech title once. Right, okay. okay. So this is the practice. And do you know the safest place to make a mistake? In front of 25 people. <laughs> <laughs> I think I made the same mistake the other night. Thanks, Nola. 
Never mind. Would you, would you do it one more time, please? Just for everybody else. And it just sounds beautiful. And that with the contest coming up is something that has to be done really well. So let's practice one more time, Catherine. There's no prize, just a prize. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Nola. Uh, let's welcome Nola Sharp with her speech night for Seahorses. Seahorses, Nola Sharp. Thank you. Yay! And, la and you, are you leading the applause, Catherine? Yes. Yes, you are. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Extend, how will you welcome people to the lectern? And let's hope that happens to all of us soon. You extend your hand and you stay at the lectern until the speaker or the role player joins you. You never leave the lectern vacant. And it's not very... I don't see that written down very much, but it's sort of an etiquette and it looks so well. My husband's involved in Rotary and I go to many Rotary functions. Some of them are held at our local hall and it's an enormous stage. And what the Rotarians do is they introduce the speaker, then they walk off the stage and the speaker's coming down, coming down, coming down, walking up the steps, walking up the steps, and they finally get to the lectern. It, is, it makes me cringe every time. I've told them, but they pay no attention. Anyway, maybe it will get better. But please remember that. It's such a little thing, but it's really important. And the third is, thanks. Be ready to thank the speaker or the role player at the conclusion of the speech or the role and have some prepared comment of praise on speech or the role. Catherine Dickey, that I just introduced a moment ago, has been, is a new Toastmaster, but her segues after introduction to speakers and role players is wonderful. So that's another skill that you are going to have to learn as a new Toastmaster. It is a simple formula that many do not prepare beforehand, therefore they prepare to fail. And that is, are there any questions about Toastmasters, please? Is there anything that you didn't understand? Oh, there are no hands up. You're going to make the Nola. most fun. Oh, Nola, yes. there's a question in the chat box. What's Thank the you. rationale behind repeating the speaker name and speech title in the way proposed? Because, Wiz, it's really important that you understand who is speaking, especially in a contest when you are the evaluator. If you have not heard the name correctly the first time, you will pick it up the second time, especially when we have names now with, with uh, letters that go for half a mile. We have to get them right. We have to enunciate them clearly. And with the title, when you become a speechwriter extraordinaire, the title of your speech is so important. It starts speaking to your audience before you open your mouth. The title creates an expectation. And for people that speak quickly like I do, and if it's a speech title that people haven't picked up on the first time, that is the reason why you say it the second time. And this is a Nola's version of why we do it. Has anyone else got a version that is different to that? Marlene's got her thumb up and she's been around forever. So that is, are there any more questions? And I thank you for the question. Lakshini, thank you. Nola, is it the same meaning when you said a speech titled as saying a speech entitled? I hear the two terms being used. Hmm, I'm not a grammarian extraordinaire, but when I'm introducing, I always say with the speech titled, not entitled, because doesn't entitled mean it's attached to a person rather than a statement? And Debbie Rose is uh, uh, nodding her head, so I'll take that as a yes. Whereas entitled is something that you're entitled to, whereas a title is a title. Thank you for the question, Maxine. Are there any more questions? I'm going to ask a Dorothy Dix type question. Why do Toastmasters hand over with a handshake when we're meeting in person because when and this is another nolarism because when toastmasters was first um, started i would suspect it's a form of respect and because respect is one of our core values why would we not why would we not is that a satisfactory answer michael 
everything from you is satisfactory, Nola. Oh, you lovely, lovely man. Well, with you, without your permission, I'm now going to go to the table topics role. Are there any new members that have been a table topics master yet? And I'll ask my helpers, are there any hands up of the new members that are with us today? Have you been a table topics master? Excellent, because there will be questions later, so you will be able to be a part of that. And I'm hoping that you enjoyed the role. But then again, maybe you will say to yourself, oh, if only I'd listened to Nola's presentation before I did the role, I would have done it so much better. So let's see what I can teach you, maybe. Table Topics Master is an opportunity to introduce unique presentations with questions that will elicit great responses from club members. It's the fun part of the meeting, I would like to suggest. But like any role, you must describe your role first before you do the role. Can someone suggest why, would we, why we would do that? Because the members have been around a while. Why do we always explain our role before we do it at Toastmasters? Are there any hands up, please, Sue? Can you see? Jaya from Glen Waverley. Thank you. For new what? members, for the benefit of the new members. That's exactly right. For the benefit of the new members, or if you have people in the room that... Um, there's an R, there's an R. And for new, new members that may be potential members, they have to understand why we do what we do. So thank you for the question. And you have to describe it and the relevance of impromptu speaking. Why do we do it? And sometimes even with old Toastmasters, we need to keep reiterating why we do what we do. And you have to mention the timing and with the encouragement to people to reach the red light. And in that way, they have a goal. They, because you, when you first start as a Toastmaster, you've no idea how long you've been speaking and sometimes you frighten yourself and you sit down really quickly because you don't understand the timing. So that is why we use the lights and I always encourage people to get to the red light if possible, but if they get to the green light, that's okay too. And possible ways of answering as discussed in Tom's wonderful workshop in the last session. And I hope those that were there have remembered his wonderful do's for answering a table topics question. I'd like to mention four important do's. Would you pick up your pen, please? The first one is to ask an open ended question. Make it a question. There are a lot of table topic contests now where people make a statement and I'm just an old-fashioned girl. I really like a question that can be answered rather than a topic and I know it's called table topics but in my view and for the new members that are a part of this workshop when you are table topics master you are going to ask an open-ended question and then you can decide further down the track what you will do. Number two, Ask the question first, then nominate the respondent. Because if you ask the respondent first, everyone else turns their ears off and they don't listen and they don't contemplate what their answer would be. So if you ask the question first, then everyone's thinking, oh, how am I going to answer that? How am I going to answer that? So that is why you ask the question first. Then three, determine your respondent after program changes and apologies have been given. Now, the reason for that is if you are a organized table topics master, you have looked at the agenda and you have determined who is going to be at the meeting and who you're going to ask. And you may have to amend that. That's why the last thing you do before you get up to ask your open-ended questions is to determine that the person actually is at the meeting and or has not been given a major role. Because my fourth tip is, basing the questions around the theme of the meeting helps with continuity. But if you, it's important that you ask a club member or guest that does not have a role or significant role in the meeting. Because people don't come to Toastmasters meetings not to talk. And so the Table Topics Master, this is your role, to decide who has not got a speaking role on the agenda and they are the first port of call for your table topics question. 
Are there any questions about that? Any hands up? Everyone deserves to speak at a club meeting. Unless you've got 40 members, of course, as some uh, clubs, and I don't know what they do about that, but I'm hoping they don't choose people that have a major role at the meeting. And it's nice to ask a visiting Toastmaster guest, I would advise, uh, but I would advise against asking a non-Toastmaster guest unless approached prior to the meeting, because there are very confident people that come as guests to your Toastmasters meeting. And if it is known that they are confident people, for instance, you might have the Lord Mayor visit your club, and I'm suggesting he may not be too nervous about getting up and, and speaking, but that has to be addressed before the meeting to ensure that they are going to be feeling comfortable with that. And have fun with it. Use props and dress to impress. Now, if I was a Table Topics Master and the theme was holidays, I would dress myself in, in something that was holiday-ish. Um, and I was going to make a list of suggestions helped by Sue in the chat box, but I see I'm already on green and I've got another two uh, roles to cover, so I'm not going to be able to do that. Oh, my goodness. Um, but you can use hats and vegetables and toys and flowers and and give an opening line that each respondent has to use in the response that they give. The sky is the limit and the interest to the table topics segment in my view is added to if you use physical props. And I'm going to leave it at that because of the green light and go on to my next segment. Are there any questions? Okay, evaluation. Oh, there is a question. Thank you. I saw a light up. Suzanne, thank you. Okay. I was just going to ask, can you give me an example of a question that you really enjoyed listening to or asking? Have you got like a, a cracker of a question? that I have got a cracker of a question. This was asked of me when I won the Table Topics, quest, uh, Table Topics contest in Perth when Western Australia was a part of our district. And the question was, when will you know when you are good enough? When will you know when you are good enough? And all of you, I hope, in your head have an answer to that question. And even after this session, maybe you'd like to have a go at answering that. And... I won that, but the girl, and, and I talked about positive, but the girl who came second, she gave an amazing answer and said, I've never been good enough. That was her opening to her Table Topics response. And I loved it. But what Marlene was saying before about creating a, creating a, a humour in your speech, I think the only reason that I won is with my speech, I had humour and she did not, of course, because it was such a serious uh, response. So even in a serious response, if you can get humour in, it's a benefit. I now know why I'm on green and I didn't realise I'd be on green because I'm answering all these questions. Have I got any leeway, Sue, with timing? No? Okay. Evaluate a role, and this is a personal perspective. I'm not using TI slides, it's just me. Evaluations quoted often as the basis on which our Toastmaster organisation is based, and you at every meeting have the ability to empower, to celebrate, and ensure a speaker wants to speak again and again. That is the primary role. As an evaluator, you have to learn before you evaluate what the objectives of the speech are. You need to listen actively. You need to personalize your language. Don't try and be anybody else but yourself. And you will nourish the self-esteem. And you need to demonstrate why you thought something was wonderful. And you need to show how people can improve. So if you, I haven't got time to go into those. Are there any questions about those? You have to demonstrate why you thought something was wonderful and you have to show how something can be improved. 
If the speaker performance is a barrier to effective communication, contact, contact them after the meeting to expand on the recommendation given verbally. So if you have someone that has spoken so badly that you do not give that in your evaluation, in my view, you say you could have improved on the content of your speech and just leave it at that. But afterwards, if you really think it's a, going to be a problem for the speaker, will you send an email? Will you give them a call and just have a conversation? The evaluation does not have to finish at the meeting if you are to empower the members that are so important to you because they will become some of the best friends that you will ever have. As a Toastmaster, we have a formula. We praise, we recommend, and we praise. This formula is non-negotiable. As humans, we are engaged when we hear praise from someone, far more likely to take a recommendation when it's sandwiched between another lot of praise to close the evaluation. If we used recommend, 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 it would be so easy for being the flawed human beings that we are and finding mistakes others make come so easy to us. I knew a person that I invited to Toastmasters and she realized she couldn't join our organization because all she saw were the flaws when people spoke. She even went up to the uh, blackboard and erased information of the word of the day. Can you believe that? Because it wasn't spelt correctly. So perhaps it's just as well, she's not a part of our community. If we used praise, recommend, 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 you're still not going to have a happy speaker. Most would be so disheartened they may never return. In 14 years as a Toastmaster involved in three clubs and I go wherever I'm asked to go, I have only seen one evaluation that I wish I hadn't heard. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful fact. So most of us find it very hard, very easy to give evaluations that are important. So what an important role being assigned an evaluator is, please do not take it lightly. Even when you are not appointed as an evaluator, do it anyway. Have your pen that you are writing with today and a piece of paper and just write things down that you really liked of a speaker, even when you're not the evaluator. And always, always allow kindness to be your guide. Trish Brown, District 73, evaluation champion, 10 years ago, gave an evaluation I shall never forget. It was one of the worst speakers and the worst speeches I have ever heard. But Trish's evaluation started with, I thank you, Dorothy, for having the courage to come and deliver your speak at, speech at Lilydale Toastmasters. And she concluded by saying, thank you and I hope you feel empowered by the fact that you presented this speech tonight. How wonderful, how wonderful is that? So my advice is to be a Trish. There are four important considerations. Make your evaluation relevant to the speaker and the speech de delivered. The worst deviation from this happened at a District 73 final and he won. There were people in that room of hundreds who were going to leave Toastmasters because the evaluation was not relevant to the speaker. It was an evaluation that could have been written in his lounge room three weeks before but because he was a very out there presenter, the judges judged the way he gave the evaluation rather than the content of the evaluation. The rhetoric was expansive and the confidence was evident. The formula was used, but it had nothing to do with what the audience had heard. And if it had been a football match, he would have been booed, I would suggest. There you go. No, my second, while the speaker is speaking, have visual contact. You cannot evaluate a speech presentation without viewing the presentation from start to finish. 
Of course, you need the pencil that you have to make pertinent points, but don't have your head down while you are writing your evaluation when the speaker is speaking. You don't need to take copious notes. You have to be aware of the gestures and the facial expressions, et cetera, et cetera. Number three, what to do when you are the new Toastmaster evaluating an experienced Toastmaster. I'm sure every new Toastmaster here today and some of us that are experienced Toastmasters tremble in our boots when we're given the, the job of doing that. But please do not be concerned because evaluations are your personal opinions. When something resonates with you or is pleasing in your view, that is what you include in your evaluation. How good is that? That's all you have to do. Give your personal opinion, like when you have a conversation with your best mates around coffee, red wine, or a really good scotch. Four, offering suggestions for commendation and recommendation need to have the why, which I mentioned earlier. But commendation is easier. I loved your descriptive language for it allowed me to visualise your situation, like Marlene was speaking about. I felt the strength of your presentation was in the speech structure, which meant I could follow easily your storyline. That's giving the recommendation and the why the recommendation is that it's been given. But it's not so easy when a new member is asked to give a recommendation. And I've given you some suggestions maybe. I would have liked more detail about blah, 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 for my understanding would have been greater. So if a speech is given and you haven't really grasped the message, that could be a basis for your recommendation. Or your opening was so strong, but perhaps strengthening your conclusion would have balanced the speech better. So again, you're saying what you believe, but you're telling how it could be improved. If you are evaluating the perfect speech, do not make something up just to have a recommendation. I see this too many times. When people have a recommendation that has nothing to do with anything, if you are, um, if you just have the evaluation for a perfect speech, an idea could be, I see you as an accomplished speaker. Perhaps you could share what you know with an educational on speech writing. So it's a recommendation but not on the speech, but how the speaker could improve. Always, always close with a compliment, but vary it. I see many concluding with, I look forward to. Be creative. Make your evaluation your evaluation. Use our language as it should be at a Toastmasters meeting. Excuse me, Nola. Um, yes. We've gone a bit over time. Could you, if you want to, just quickly run through the general evaluator? Oh my goodness, I do apologize. Sorry, there's the bell. General evaluator role. You're gonna have two hey. minutes. <laughs> I've got two minutes, okay. I'm going to speak really quickly. So have you got your ears on? A role which is not given to a new member, a role that gives feedback on how the meeting was viewed overall at the end of the meeting agenda. A GE evaluates all roles that have not previously been evaluated after firstly describing the purpose of the role. Again, a general evaluator needs to describe why she has got the role before she actions the role. And please do not overlook or to comment on setup and preparation, obvious prior to the meeting start. Sergeant at Arms quite often is overlooked in this role and we've had some wonderful Sergeant at Arms that create the vibe before um, people even start the meeting and that needs to be acknowledged. In some clubs, a GE or Toastmaster speaks briefly on purpose techniques and benefits of evaluations prior to the first evaluation being given. And I think that's a good idea. What that means is that someone on the agenda, whether it be the Toastmaster or the GE before any evaluation is given, uh, explains why evaluations are important. My uh, choice is to speak in the first person using I and we. For new valued enthusiastic members with us today, templates on all meeting roles are available by simply picking on, clicking onto the Easy Speak agenda or of course on the GE role. 
phrases that add quality to your GE report could be, role explains succinctly, reflected great listening skills, respectful of timing, logical flow, points supported by examples, and these words I love, assurance, sincerity, enthusiasm, attention getting, above average, special praise, and of course, a million others. If I were you as a new Toastmaster, I would make a list of all the wonderful words that you could use in your evaluation to make you sound so wonderful. Please explore the possibilities of using our language within your comfort zone to value add. As always, conclude with positive, preparedness, overall vibe and role played by the President and the Toastmaster. Here endeth my epistle. Back to you, Sue. Thank you.